Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to focus on producer subsidies in markets. So what is a subsidy? Well, a subsidy is a payment by the government to a supplier that reduces their cost of production and encourages them to increase output. It can be any form of government support. It could be financial or otherwise, occasionally offered to consumers, but by and large offered to producers. There are lots of examples of where subsidies are in the news at the moment. For example, until recently, the government offered a quite a substantial biofuel subsidy for farmers and a generous solar panel feed-in tariffs for consumers to install solar panels on their roofs to generate their own energy. The government, for example, could subsidise apprenticeship schemes, some sort of input subsidy that lowers the cost for businesses of training their workers. And equally, it could also make aid to businesses making a loss. The, the problems in the steel industry are particularly relevant there, I think. We've seen subsidies for wind farm investments. Some governments offer generous food and fuel subsidies, particularly in developing countries. The UK government has been offering some financial incentives for working families looking for childcare. And the railway industry in the UK is part subsidised by government funds. So there are lots of examples of government subsidies always in the news and worth, and worth following. So let's go through the basic diagram of what happens if the government introduces a subsidy on a producer. So here's the original situation. The price is in equilibrium at P1 and the quantity is Q1. What's the effect of a subsidy on market prices for consumers? To what extent will a subsidy feed through to a lower price for final consumers? We'll check that out in a second. First of all, the impact of a subsidy. So the subsidy is on the producer. and We're going to assume it's a given amount per unit. This causes a fall in their unit costs, and therefore that causes an outward shift of their supply curve, which we can see here. So the supply curve is shifted down, and the extent of the subsidy is always shown by the vertical distance between the two supply curves. That's really important and well worth labelling in an exam. So the subsidy has increased market supply, shifted it out, and as a result, we can move eventually to a new lower equilibrium price and an expansion along the demand curve. So that's the basic subsidy diagram showing how an outward shift of supply causes the market price to fall. Never get in the exam, it's important to work through what's called the transmission mechanism. Explain to the examiner how a subsidy eventually feeds its way through to a lower price for the consumer. Second thing you may want to show is how much total government spending there is on the subsidy. So here's our original price P1 again, and we've put in place the supply curve after the subsidy. So the market price will fall to P2 and quantity will increase, expand to Q2. Now, how much does the producer get? Well, they'll get the price P2 plus the subsidy. So we need to draw up vertically from Q2 to there, draw across to the y-axis and find a price P3. So the producer will end up receiving this amount of spending from the government on the subsidy. The subsidy per unit is P3, P2, multiplied by the output Q2 gives the total spending on the subsidy, shown by that shaded area. And it's quite important, I think, in the exam to label and annotate fully to help the examiner and give them, get them to give you full marks. So the consumer will pay price P2. They've benefited from the lower price. The producer receives P3 which is the market price P2 plus the subsidy. This diagram shows the total government spending on a subsidy. So to what extent are subsidies justified? Are there economic and social justifications for this form of intervention? Keep in mind, they're introduced for a whole, a whole variety of economic, social and often political reasons. So, for example, governments may want to target poorer families and help with the cost of food or childcare. Governments may want to incentivise new investment in fledgling sectors, 
such as renewable energy, or perhaps protect sunset industries where jobs are at risk. Governments may want to make certain uh, products, such as healthcare, more affordable. They may want to cut the cost of employing and training workers to improve the economy's human capital. They may also regard subsidies as a way of achieving, eventually, a more equitable distribution of income and access to basic goods and services. There might also be a justification in terms of trying to reduce the externalities associated with transport. And governments may also want to subsidise other merit goods, such as the arts and other cultural services. So oftentimes subsidies have plausible justifications. The key is to be able to analyse the, the likely effectiveness and efficiency of subsidy as a form of intervention. Just before we look at the evaluation, let's just do a bit more analysis. So I said, uh, I asked a question, to what extent does a subsidy feed through to the consumer in the form of a lower price? Well, this depends on the price elasticity of demand. And the basic revision point to take away is that the more inelastic the demand, the greater is the consumer's gain from a subsidy in terms of a lower price. Here we have an inelastic demand D1 and the subsidy has brought about quite a significant fall in the price. Contrast that with this example where demand is relatively elastic. In other words, the coefficient of elasticity is greater than one. And we see on the right hand side here that the main effect of the subsidy is to increase the equilibrium quantity traded rather than lead to a much lower market price. So the elasticity of demand will affect the likely consequences of a subsidy. Oftentimes in the exam it's a good idea to draw two diagrams side by side to show the effect of a change in elasticity. So let's just move on finally in this little topic video to think about the evaluation points. We have to evaluate the effectiveness of subsidy as a form of intervention in markets. So here are some key points. First of all, one could question whether a subsidy actually is effective in meeting the aims. So, for example, does a subsidy for childcare actually have much effect on the affordability of childcare in a country? It could be actually the issue is rather a supply side problem rather than a demand side issue. Is the subsidy sufficient? Might other incentives be needed to be offered to producers or consumers? So first of all, challenge the effectiveness. Secondly, will a subsidy affect efficiency? Will it affect productivity? You can make a case, for example, for saying that subsidising apprenticeships for youth unemployed could be a very effective long run way of increasing the economy's productivity. Although the effects will obviously take several years to show through. Is there a danger that firms in receipt of subsidies may become over-dependent on state aid or other forms of financial help? And as a result, their efficiency may, may suffer going forward. A third uh, crucial evaluation question to ask is, what does the subsidy cost? We saw that in the previous diagram showing how much the government spent. But it's an important question because in some countries, subsidies run into many millions, often billions, of pounds and dollars. So how much does the subsidy cost uh, and who benefits? Is the subsidy part self-financing? A well-targeted subsidy affecting apprenticeships, for example, workplace training, could in theory repay itself over the years if people find work. Or does the subsidy actually in the long run actually fundamentally just cause taxpayers some grief, meaning they have to pay more taxes for, for, for little gain? So how much does the subsidy cost and who benefits? And finally, I think fundamentally, if we're thinking about subsidies as a form of intervention to correct for market failure, does it actually help to correct the market failure? Do more people find work if affordable childcare is available? Uh, or is it a relatively ineffective thing? Keep in mind also uh, that there's a risk, a danger of subsidies leading to government failure, uh, the waste associated with some forms of, of subsidy. And we'll cover government failure in a separate topic video. In particular, one might bring into the discussion the law of unintended consequences.
to unforeseen events when governments make a particular policy decision. So hopefully you can see that there's a lot of economics to cover here. The basic analysis of a subsidy needs to be learnt. The importance of elasticity of demand in shaping the effect of a subsidy. And then you can get stuck into your evaluation thinking about the likely consequences. Check out the Tutor2 website for more uh, resources uploaded on a daily basis and of course our YouTube site for year one micro revision. Thanks for joining us this time and uh, see you soon.